Hey there guys, today I'm out on the lower Willamette in pursuit of white sturgeon. Now, during the winter time, uh, sturgeon move up into Swan Island Basin, which is a very popular kayak fishery for these fish, because uh, it's very shallow, there's no current, but those fish move out of that basin uh, during the spring and summertime to capitalize on food resources, uh, such as shad coming into the river system and smelt. And they move out and will often hang out in big deep water holes uh, that are scattered throughout the lower Willamette, below Willamette Falls. So today I'm going to go out and target these fish in one of the more popular spots, which is uh, often referred to as the Toyota Hole, uh, which is just downstream of St. John's Bridge. Uh, it's basically this big 90-foot hole that you can see on your fish finder if you have uh, base maps um, and they hang out right there. I mean, So one of the great challenges of targeting these fish for kayak anglers during the spring and summer months is that uh, anchoring in those deep waters is very challenging and in fact anchoring is probably one of the most dangerous things you can do on our large Pacific Northwest rivers in a kayak. Uh, there's lots of opportunities to get tangled and stuff and, and potentially drown. But What's cool about this kayak with this autopilot from Old Town is that it has a Minn Kota iPilot which has built-in spot lock which is going to allow me to essentially uh, ropeless anchor over these deep water holes and target these sturgeon uh, and if I want to drop off anchor all I have to do is push a button and if I want to anchor up I can push a button the GPS built into the iPilot will hold me uh, plus minus a few feet uh, I like to target these fish on outgoing tides. It helps to stabilize uh, the kayak in terms of drift. Um, if there's stagnant water, wind can kind of push you around in circles. But when you have current and you've got wind, uh, the iPod does a very good job of holding you in one spot. I think another benefit of targeting these fish on the outgoing tide is that it helps create a long scent trail. So you put your gear down, you get a nice scent trail going, it carries it downstream and draws more fish upstream to you. Whereas in stagnant water situations such as tidal exchanges or oh, when you got incoming tide and there's less current, your scent plume is not traveling as much. You can see here on the fish finder, I can see several sturgeon laying on the bottom right here as I've come over this deeper hole. I'm gonna go down and check out my spots at the end of this slot, but if I don't see any down there, I'm gonna move back up here because I'm seeing sturgeon stacked all along the bottom here, some of them suspended off the bottom, getting a little bit of interference from uh, a nearby boat. But uh, yes, yeah, so this looks good. This is what you're looking for. These are your sturgeon marks. There's a bite. I got a ship coming right here beside me. There we go. Got him. All right. So I really prefer anywhere from seven to eight and a half foot rods for this fishery. Uh, composite or fiberglass materials are better because of their durability in terms of high sticking. The graphite, if you overload it, tends to explode. Uh, but these composite and glass rods are a lot more forgiving and easier to uh, bite the fish on. They also have that softer tip which helps to detect that lighter bite a little bit better. As far as your main line goes out here in the open channel, 50 pound braid's probably sufficient, but if you're gonna be fishing near dry docks or if you're finding a lot of broken anchor lines out here, and there's some places out here in this hole where there's several broken anchor lines, um, 100 pounds better, it's gonna help you deal with the preventing getting sawed off um, by those structures. <sighs> Getting them off the bottom is the hard part. Now you can either drop off your anchor if you're using a rope anchor, or for me on spot lock I can just hit a button and drift. This one doesn't feel like it's too big of a fish so I'm just going to stay and let the motor keep me in position. But if you get a really big fish, um, letting the fish drag you around actually is a good way to help fatigue them and uh, will help shorten the length of the fight. Although you might end up far from where you're originally hooked up. I've got them off the bottom now. I'm starting to win. It's amazing how even a small sturgeon will put up such a strong fight. There we go. Just a little three-footer. 
<laughs> See it. There we go. Such a cool fish. All right, come back here, buddy. Nice. She uses this Dacron leader because it's nice and soft. This is 80 pound, and then a barbless owner hook. Now, when you handle these fish, you have to be careful because they have sharp scoots. You want to support them. You don't want to hold them up. So typically, on the grab the tail underneath the pectoral fins. There you go. You don't want to hold them straight up and down. It can damage their organs. All right, let's get this fish back in the water. See you. All right, let's get another bait down there. So here's the the rig: sliding cannonball weight, six to ten ounces slider, and then a swivel, and then two to three feet long Dacron leader. And right now I'm just using anchovy. I may switch it up in a little bit to see what else they're snacking on. Lots of fish down there still. Okay, once I hit the bottom, just kind of pop it once, just to make sure that uh, the cannonball isn't buried in the mud and the bait's not buried in the mud. And just wait for another bite. Oh, another bite right there. Already. Just got down there, cleaning off my phone. It's chewing on it. Oh. Had his tail wrapped around it or something. There was a lot of scoop. Here we go. That's a good. That's a good bite. One more grab. One more suck. There he is. Got him. All right. Feels like another smaller, two or three foot fish. Might be even smaller than that. Might be a baby. Yeah, he's coming right off the bottom already. Oh, never mind. He was like, I let you take me off the bottom once. I'm not letting that happen again. I don't know if he's just a smaller fish with a lot of spunk or... That's the cool thing is you never know. I mean, they could be a one foot fish. They could be an eight foot giant. So, I mean, this spot lock is holding me. That's the cool thing about the spot lock is rope free anchoring. The lower Willamette is an inland port and there will be large ships move up through here so you have to get out of their way if you're on an anchor you gotta drop off your anchor and then hope your anchor doesn't get sucked up or destroyed by the ship um, but with spot lock I can just hit a button get out of the way of any oncoming commercial traffic and then I can go right back and just hit a button and I'm right back fishing again there he is oh, he's actually bigger than the last guy he just oh he's blowing bubbles you see these bubbles that's a sign that they're tired. Okay, so they have a supported belly here. Don't cut me up. They have a big Hoover mouth that sticks out like that. Very cool fish. Back in the water. Let the water support his body. There you go. Down to the bottom. Let's try some squid. See if they want the squid. Squid's nice because it's so durable. It can stay on the hook and you know, if they hit these uh, anchovies a couple times and you miss the bite, uh, they can just slurp them right off. See if they want squid. If we don't get bit on this in 10 minutes, we'll switch back to the anchovy, which we know is working. I can see sturgeon shooting all up and down through the water column. You see them jumping all around me. You can actually see them in the water column. Well, I'm not getting much action on the squid, so I'm going to pull this back up. Go back to the chovy. They're real particular about what they're feeding on some days, and other days they don't seem to care. Chew. Eat it. Eat it. They just keep coming back and pecking on it. Here we go. No, no. Peck, 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 peck. Pecking. There we go. There we go. Got him. There we go. That's a good fish. Just in a stalemate right now. Woo! He is running. That might have taken it out of him though. Yeah, there we go. That one went in. Get him up off the bottom. 
Got them right back underneath me again, straight down. So they have rules on handling these fish to help uh, reduce injury to them. So if they are over 54 inches from the fork inside the tail to the tip of the nose, they got to stay in the water. So those are considered oversized. They do periodically allow harvest of fish um, but I would be very cautious about consuming these sturgeon. Um, the Willamette River's got, especially resident fish, um, there's a lot of issues with uh, heavy metals and, woo, look at that. All the way back down to the bottom. Straight down, 100 feet. Jeez, that's crazy. I've never seen them do that. Like, I had them at 20 feet and then he went all the way back down the bottom. As I was saying, they do allow harvest, but there's already warnings about eating resident fish from Willamette River. And it's true that some of these sturgeon are migratory and go out, wander out into the Columbia and into the ocean and even wander up to other uh, bays and estuaries all across the West Coast. But there's no way to tell if those fish have been here resident or how long they've been resident here or if they're migratory. And you are taking a bit of a chance on consuming uh, those fish so I'd be very cautious about eating fish from here if you do decide to eat harvest sturgeon from here during the season that it's allowed um, definitely do not feed it to pregnant women or children and definitely limit how much you consume yourself just to be careful and cautious so you can also make sure that um, like don't eat like the belly meat or um, you can also scrape away the gray meat on the side of the fillets on the outside. Uh, those are the areas that are most likely, those areas rich in fat, is where you're most likely to get the toxins that are in these fish. I got this guy close to the surface here, but last time he went all the way to the bottom, so... I'm not sure what he's going to do now. Oh, man. He hasn't been blowing bubbles, but... Can't get my eyes on him. Oh my gosh, here he goes again. This guy's an animal. Oh gosh. Oh man, this is a nice size fish. Probably four and a half feet long. Woo, here he goes back to the bottom. That's a good four footer. Oh, I just barely have him hooked, man. Barely hooked I have that guy, man. Just right on the edge of the lip. Isn't that nutty? You can see all the sensory organs on the bottom of their nose. Detecting smell. See ya. <laughs> there you go. You definitely have to be cautious about those scoots. This, uh, this one caught me with his tail scoot uh, while I was letting him go. And he sliced me pretty good. Nice. <laughs> Whoa. That was quite the tail tail smack the, the line. Get him off the bottom. Can I keep him there? Is the issue. Maybe not. Uh, I got your 10 foot off the bottom. Can I hold him there is the question. Uh, nope. There he goes. There he is. A nice fish. Now he's blowing bubbles. There we go. Running out of juice there, buddy. Okay. Wow, that was an epic fight for that guy. He really put up a fight. Awesome fish. Check it out. All right, this will be my last fish of the day. There's some rain on the horizon and winds are picking up and I'm out of bait. But awesome fishery. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'll put links to the rod, reels, and tackle that I use. 
and yeah come out and take advantage of this really cool catch and release fishery take care of these fish so they're here for millions more years i'll see you guys next time just remember fish smarter not harder bye